Okay, the next we'll be talking about the uh, check digit method uh, uh, to identify possible errors. It's actually a verification, uh, error verification method. We'll be talking about error verification versus validation later on. Uh, but basically what it, it, it can be applied to sequence where I'm using a sequence of numbers. For example, if I'm using a, the international uh, standard book number, which are possibly at the end of your books, you can see there's a sequence of numbers written under a barcode. So, uh, sim and similarly, we can identify for vehicle identification numbers that can be registration numbers, so on and so forth. For vehicles, these numbers can be verified using your check digit formula, right? Now, check digit, what does it do? It is applied on this type of data where I'm using a sequence of numbers, always in numeric data. But what really it does is that it identifies errors such as this one, for example, I was supposed to enter 5307, but I entered 5327. So such type of errors will be a, capable of being discovered in this check digit. Similarly, if I added uh, an additional digit, I was supposed to enter 5307, but I accidentally entered 53107. If I using if I'm using check digit, this error will be identified, and any sort of phonetic errors that if I'm, for example, explaining a number on a telephone call, and I accidentally entered thirteen instead of thirty, so they sound similar, and uh, the person who was listening to my you know conversation and he was uh, he entered thirteen when I said thirty, or fifteen uh, as opposed to fifty. Such type of errors uh, can be easily identified using my check digit. Now, check digit follows two methods. There's two formulas can be used for check digit. One is known as the ISBN 13, and one is known as the Modulo 11. Now, let's go through, regardless of whatever method you discuss here, ISBN 13, Modulo 11, there are two phases to both of these techniques. And any other method that possibly may you may encounter in the in your past paper question, I will show you an example. Now, ISBN 13, module 11, whatever check digit method you will look, there are two phases of it. The first phase is the check digit calculation. And the second phase is the check digit verification, always, okay, always. So first of all, I have to calculate the check digit. Only then I can proceed to check whether a number is correct or not according to the check digit. Now let's look at the I, uh, ISBN 13 method. Again, ISBN 13 method first will require the check digit calculation method. And the second will be including, the second phase will be the check digit verification method. Now let's go step by step. The ISBN 13 um, uh, uh, process involves 12 digits. It involves the ISBN number is 12 digits long. So this is applied on a 12 digit number. As you can see here, this number has one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, and twelve. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve digits. And I need my. I need to calculate a check digit. That will be my thirteenth digit. Thirteenth digit will be my check. Digit. So for, so far, my original ISBN number, the complete number on its own without the check digit, is only twelve digits, right? And what we do is that we look at the odd positions versus the even positions of this number. As you can see, see here, this is position one, this is position three, five, seven, nine, and 11. Similarly, this is the even positions two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, like so. Now, odd positions versus even positions, this is what to look at. We will separate the numbers in the odd positions like nine, eight, three, zero, eight, and eight. As you can see here, I have separated the odd numbers in the odd positions and we will simply add them together to 36. And we will take the positions placed in the even, uh, the numbers in the even positions, seven, zero, four, nine, three, and two. And we will add them together as well. The difference is the even position numbers are added and then multiplied by three. As you can see here, three. We've got two sums here the sums of all odd position numbers and the sum of all even numbers positions multiply by three. So we got two numbers here. We will take these two numbers together. And I repeat, the odd numbers are simply added together. Odd position numbers, not odd numbers, but odd position numbers, one, three, five, nine, eight, three, zero, eight, eight. 
odd position numbers are simply added together but the even position numbers are added and then multiplied by 3 to result in this number we get these two numbers 36 and 75 and we add them together to divide them by 8 as you can see here 36 plus 75 results in divide by 10 sorry 36 plus 75 results in 111 when i divide that by 10 it does not go completely on 10 right so what it means that i have a remainder of one so let's check that out is this true i have 111 right here and i divided by 10 that means i can have this number 11 it goes by 11 it resulting in this and i have this one remainder here right so this is my remainder. This is what it's talking about. We take this remainder and we subtract it from 10. It's always 10. This is part of the formula, right? This is part of the process. It's part of the algorithm. So we take this remainder and we subtract it from 10, always 10, always 10. And we get this number right here, 9. This 9 will be my check digit. And simply we will add this as my 13th digit on the rightmost, the least significant side. We'll add this 9 here, right here. And this will result in my 13 digit resulting in this complete number, uh, including my check digit. So the first phase of calculating my check digit looks something like this. This is my ISBN method and this is my calculated check digit. And this results in my complete number with 13 digits, 12 digits with the actual data and the 13th digit is my check digit. This is the first phase. Now, what do we do next? The second phase is using this check digit, for example, to calculate whether a number is correct or not. Now, this is where this procedure really works. Now, this is not actually checking the value, value is correct or not. This is simply calculating the check digit. Checking comes here. Now, imagine that I have the check digit, the exact same value. You see this exact same number, but this time it includes the check digit. This is 13 digits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is my 13 digit, right? This 19, 9 is the check digit that I just calculated. Now, I, let's just say you entered this number somewhere. This ISBN 13 method will use this method this procedure to verify if the number was entered correctly or not based on the check digit provided here. Now, how does this work? Same method. We will take the numbers in the odd positions like 9, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. The numbers in the odd positions, and we will take them together and add it. So we can see the odd position numbers are like so 9, 8, 3, 0, 8, 8, and then nine. So numbers in the odd positions are added together resulting in 45. And then we do the same thing with even numbers. The numbers in the even positions, seven plus zero plus four plus nine plus three plus two. And like before, we have to multiply the even position numbers after adding, adding them together by three, we get this. So as you can see here, it's, it's a similar method, but the difference is that I had to include my check digit in my odd uh, position numbers. That's the only difference. Other than that, there's no difference. We add them together, divide them by 10. Again, exact same method, divide them by 10. But this time we get a number that should be fully divisible by 10, in which case the remainder should be zero. If my remainder ends up at zero, that means this number, according to this check, check digit is correct. If my remainder is not zero, that means there is something wrong. There is some error in this check digit. This, sorry, there's some error in this complete number because this check digit and this number do not match up according to this formula and data should not be trusted. Remainder zero, that means data is correct. And this is my ISBN 13 method. Now the modulo 11 method is also similar to this. It does the exact same thing. It's used from the same, possibly same errors that we want to uh, see if the number sequence of numbers has been entered incorrectly. My check digit methods can be used to identify this. Now, imagine I'm using the modulo 11 method. Now, modulo 11 method relies on uh, seven digits, original seven digits, right? And we, our check digit will be my eighth digit. Now, what happens here? Let's just say this is my original number, four, one, five, six, seven, one, zero. For the modulo 11 method, I will require my positions. 
the positions of, of the where the number is starting from the right side. You can see here my positions are starting from the right side. This zero is my second position. My first one is in my third position. Seven is my fourth position. Six in my fifth position. Five in my sixth position. One in my seventh position. And four in my eighth position. That's a total of eight numbers. But wait a second. Where is my first number? Where's the number in the first position? That is reserved from my check digit. And as, as mentioned before, I am at the first phase of my check digit uh, procedure. And in the first phase involves me just calculating the check digit right now. And right now I'm, I don't have a check digit. So first phase involves calculating the check digit. So this first position is yet to be determined. That will be my check digit, right? Now, so we can see here that this first place is right now empty. There's no check digit, but I will work with the remaining values, right? So what do we do here is simply multiply these values, this original number with its position. We can call this position as weights, right? We multiply each value with its weight, which is corresponding to its position. So zero multiplied by two, one multiplied by three, seven multiplied by four, six multiplied by five, five multiplied by six, one multiplied by seven, and four multiplied by eight. As you can see here, the products that I just mentioned are written here, eight by four, Four, seven by one, six by five, five by six, four by seven, three by one, and two by zero. All products that I just mentioned are written here. Then we have to sum these products. So when we multiply them together, we add them together. So eight multiplied by four is 32, seven, six, 30, 30 again, 28, three and zero. Then we add these products together, getting a total number of 11. Again. And we divide the number by 11. We're using 11 again for this method again. So 11, 130 divided by 11 looks something like this. We have 130. And since 130 does not completely divide by 11, it results in something like 11. This means 121 resulting in nine as my remainder. Now you can see I need this nine for my further calculation. My remainder is nine. What I do is I proceed, as you remember in the previous method, it was minus uh, subtraction from 10. This time we do subtraction from 11. This method is slightly different. We do subtraction for 11 this for, for this method. 11 minus two, 9 results in my 2. And this will be my check digit. We add, add this check digit to the position I mentioned here. And this will be my resulting number right like this. Right? Now, there's one thing to note here is that imagine that if I get a remainder 1, instead of getting remainder 9, I get a remainder 1 here. That means in this part of my part, uh, you know, calculation, I will be doing something like this. 11 minus 1 is equal to 10. And 10 should be my check digit. But the thing is, like this was 2 here, this will result in 10. And this should be my check digit, right? But the thing is, check digit has to be a single digit. This 10 cannot happen. This is two digits. Now, if you end up with 10 as your check digit, you are, you are allowed to use X in place of that because I cannot mention two digits. Check digit has to be only single length. In which case, if my check digit ends up as 10, I am allowed to add a number like this. For example, this number, if it was ending up at X, four, one, five, six, uh, seven, three, zero, whatever. And if my check digit should be 10, if it was 10, I will enter an X in my check digit position. This is, this is my complete modulo 11 the number with the check digit X, meaning 10, right? Other than that, if it's zero, you mentioned zero. If it's one, you mentioned one, like you mentioned two, so on and so forth. If it's as long as it's a single digit, that exact value has to be played here, placed here in this position. But if it's a two digit number and it cannot be 11, there's no way it cannot be beyond 10. 10 is my biggest number. Now, if I end up with 10, which is the biggest number, I am allowed to use X in place of that because it has to be a single digit. Okay, now, this was my first phase. I ended up here. This was my first phase of calculating the check digit. Now, the second part as with ISBN, the second part involves me verifying a number that is entered based on the check digit. Now, imagine that I have given a number 
four one five six seven one zero with the check digit two. Now you can see here, this is how many digits? This is a complete eight digit number, not a seven digit number. It is a complete eight digit number because my least significant digit right here represents my check digit. So now I will verify this number's correctness based on this check digit value. Method is again similar. We will simply multiply each number with its position, uh, which is we refer to it as its weight. But this time the difference is that I'm adding my check digit at position one in my calculation as well. The rest is the same. Zero multiplied by two, one multiplied by three, seven, four, six, five, five, six, one, seven, four, eight. Exact same products right here. No problem, difference at all as we just did it over here, no difference. The only difference is that my calculation involves the product of two and one as well. So one, two and one is multiplied here resulting in two. The total sum this time around should be 132. Addition of check digit, of course. Now, how do I know that this number is entered correctly based on this check digit? If my total divided by 11 results in a remainder zero, that means my number is correct. Otherwise, it is not correct. So the conclusions are same. The remainder here is also zero to determine if it's correct. And remainder here is also zero to determine correctness, okay? So this is the check digit verification method. Now, let me show you an example from your past papers that should make give you some idea of what to expect. Okay, this is an example of what to expect from your past papers. Now, you notice here that this question is describing a completely separate method. Uh, uh, our modulo, even if you're looking at the modulo 11 method, no, sorry, the, yes, modulo 11 method. The modulo 11 method relies on this position to be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then 1. As you can see in the previous screen, uh, if you go back a little bit in the video, you'll see that module 11 relies on the weights from eight to one in this position, but this is completely separate. It starts digit position one to eight. It's a not different, completely different method. And that's okay. That is completely fine. If you encountered such a question, all you have to do is read the directions carefully. As you can see here, this question has detailed all part, all aspects of this method, whatever it is, this method in complete steps. It is also mentioning that each position, even though it's changed, is different from module 11. You just follow these steps. So in this case, instead of multiplying this position with eight, you multiply it with one, multiply with two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this position is yet to be calculated. As you can see here, it's not in this example, it's not calculated. So what we do here is that we multiply four with one as according to this position here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For example, let's see, this is one position. This is two, this is three, four, five, six, and seven. So again, my, 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 my uh, calculation will look something like this. One multiplied by four and two multiplied by again, two and three multiplied by three multiplied by four and four multiplied by one, five multiplied by five and six multiplied by zero and seven multiply by eight, like this, right? So this results in four, four multiplied by one, four. This is again four, three multiplied by four is 12. This is four, sorry. This is 12, four multiplied by one, four, and then this 25, this is zero, and seven multiplied by eight will be 56. When I add these, next step is add these numbers together. So let's just say this number will become what? This is four plus four, eight. Eight plus 12, 20. 24 plus 25 is 49. Plus six is uh, 55. Plus 56 is 111, yes. Yes, 
Okay, so we got 111. Then we do what? It says total is divided by 11. We take 11 from here. As you can see here, 11, 111 does not go completely on 11. So I have 10 here, and that means it goes on 10, 110, resulting in my remainder one. Okay, it says that the remainder gives the check digit. If remainder is 10, the check digit. It, it is not asking you to subtract here because this is a completely separate method. It is not to mix with the module 11 method. So since it's not asking you to subtract this remainder from say 11 or whatever, this simply results, This it says that this remainder should be your check digit, in which case my number it one will be my check digit. So my complete number is 42415081. This is my check digit, so that's it. So according to this method, what you have to do here is that simply follow the directions. For, for example, in this question, you simply follow the directions. And this procedure is very well laid out. And if you can just, it doesn't have to be linked with module 11 or ISBN checking, it doesn't matter here. Just follow this procedure. And according to this procedure, my check digit should end up as one because we, it says that total is divided by 11 and it, it gets a remainder. We, we got remainder one here and the remainder without subtraction for any other values, so remainder should be as it is considered as my check digit. So this is how this question should be tackled and any question like this should be tackled.